Gore Vidal had a famous quote, never have children, only grandchildren. In our family, we have seven grandparents and one honorary grandparent. Both my parents and my husband's parents divorced and most of them remarried. And so there's a lot of grandparents who are showering love on our two kids. And the grandparents, they love spending time with the boys and each one interacts and relates to our boys in a different way. And then I know they go home and they recover from it because our boys have a lot of energy. But I have to say, when you're a parent, you're in the thick of it, especially when you're a parent of a child with special needs. You know, when Caleb was younger, our son with high functioning autism, we drove him to pivotal response therapy, to other therapies. You know, we were talking with the school about what accommodations he needed. There was a lot involved. And a lot of times parents don't really have the bandwidth to step back and say, okay, let me look at my estate planning now. But as the grandparents, you can really help out in this process. Grandparents often have more availability and they want to help their child financially. In this video, we're going to talk about how grandparents can really provide for their disabled grandkids in a wonderful way. Okay, so let's say that you're updating your trust. You're, you have a grandchild who has special needs and you're thinking, how do I best provide for that grandchild? Well, one thing I often suggest most of the time is setting up what we call a standalone special needs trust. So this is a trust that anybody can fund at any time. It's a separate document that stands by itself. You can fund it, other grandparents can fund it, the parents can fund it, okay? So it's, it's multifaceted, it, it works for many different people. And I see that this is like a gift to your children because they don't have to do this planning, you're doing it for them. Please keep in mind this is different than what we call a testamentary special needs trust, which is usually contained within your revocable trust and it only springs into being when you die. You can see that wouldn't work if you have multiple family members funding a trust, right? Because money could be coming from here, from there. If it's testamentary, that means it only exists when somebody dies. So you have to wait for that person to die. What if somebody wants to fund it before you die? That trust isn't available. So we always do a standalone special needs trust in those situations. Okay, so I recommend that you work with your, with your children, with the parents of the disabled grandchild. Work out the different terms. What do they want? What do you want, right? Most likely the parents would be the initial trustees of the special needs trust. So if you put money in there, the parents could immediately start managing it. Now, should you fund it immediately? We can talk about that. So you also talk with your, with your children about who would be the successor trustee of the special needs trust if the parents aren't alive. Okay, it probably won't be you because most likely you'll die before your children, okay? It might be another family member or it might be a professional. You can help your child to look around if you're looking for, let's say, a private professional fiduciary or a bank to name a successor trustee. You know, you kind of look at who's on the bench in the family, who can help out and you may not want to name them as successor trustee. You might want to name them, the family member, as a trust protector. So let's say you have a cousin. It's great. I had a client who has a, a nephew up in Walla Walla, Washington, in Washington State. And, you know, he's a very uh, wonderful nephew, but he can't be involved in the day-to-day, -day, you know, workings of my client's child, special needs trust. So he's going to be trust protector and he loves that role. I have a video called Trustees versus Trust Protectors, and I encourage you to watch that. Hey everyone, if you like my mom's video, like and subscribe. Okay, so should you fund the special needs trust during your lifetime for your grandchild? Well, it really depends. I mean, there's other ways to make gifts to your grandchildren that are a bit more straightforward. I actually talk about this in my video, Gift Taxes. And also in my video, Thank you, Rich Auntie. We talk about how to make gifts to individuals with special needs. I usually recommend making gifts. If they're smaller gifts, if they're $18,000 or less per year, you can make a gift to an ABLE account and that's considered a completed gift. So you don't have to report it to the IRS on a Form 709 on a gift tax return. So there's no hassle there. It doesn't count against your lifetime estate tax exemption. 
it really works well. But if you have a large event, you know, like you have some stock of something that's about to go public and you want to get it out of your estate before it blows up, before the value really increases, then you can transfer it into that standalone special needs trust and the parents are, are up and, and managing it. Or you might talk with the parents and say, hey, you as the grandparent, you want to be the initial trustee. You could do that as well. Now there is this thing called generation skipping transfer taxes. And I have a video on that that you might wanna watch. But for most people watching this, it won't really apply, okay? So, so the GST tax applies if you're making a gift from a grandparent to a grandchild, except that you have the same exclusion amount as the estate tax exemption, at least we do in 2024. All right, so if you make that gift, then you know you could be using up some of your estate tax exemption. So that can be something to look into, but I wouldn't be too overly concerned about it. Now, one thing that retired grandparents think about is, you know, if, if there's anything left in my retirement account, or you might have a large retirement account, how might you leave that to your children or to your grandchildren? I've had some clients name their grandchild's special needs trust as the beneficiary of the retirement account. And that can be really beneficial because a grandchild who has a special needs or a child, you know, they can inherit a retirement account and stretch out the benefits over their lifetime. So they only have to pay the required minimum distributions each year. Now compare that to neurotypical children and grandchildren who now under the SECURE Act of 2020, they have to remove all the money and pay all the taxes within 10 years. So it's more beneficial from a tax planning perspective to leave a retirement account to a special needs individual or to a special needs trust for the benefit of that individual. And I have a video on retirement accounts and leaving them to somebody with special needs. So you might wanna take a look at that. So here at Cookman Law, we love multi-generational planning. We wanna make sure that all generations are coordinated for the benefit of the disabled child or grandchild. We don't want any oopsies, you know, somebody forgot to leave something else. You also should check with your child to see if they've already created their own special needs trust, their own standalone special needs trust, because then maybe you can just fund to that special needs trust. So if you do have a grandchild with special needs and you wanna talk over your uh, different options, please reach out to our office. We would love to speak with you. And we look forward to seeing you at our next video. Hello everyone. If you liked my mom's video, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you all next time.